Then we have his study after Velasquez's portrait of Pope Innocent X. And this is the 1953 version. So in 1953, Bacon painted study after Velasquez's portrait of Pope Innocent X. Here's the original by Velasquez and the version by Bacon. And Bacon has really changed it dramatically from an uh, image of power to one of fear, really. Bacon said that uh, he never saw Velasquez's original painting and worked from reproductions. Now, if Velasquez's portrait of Pope Innocent X portrays the public face of power while hinting at, po at private flaws of the man behind it, then Bacon's study broadcasts his interpsychosis, trying to get at the character of the man and the flaws of the man without worrying about the outward appearance of the man. In Bacon's case, his pope inhabits this ethereal world of perpetual torment. This is a living hell where there's no escape. He's paralyzed with pain and fear, jolted with shocks from his golden throne, which has been transformed from a symbol of authority into an instrument of torment. The same kind of contradiction confounds his subject matter. While this study attacks the authority of the Catholic Church at the time, the social and religious establishment of his Irish childhood, it also was part of an obsessive fascination with the iconography of this painting by Velázquez. After all, Bacon will create 45 variations on this Pope Innocent X theme. So this is certainly an obsessive quality. And it's possible that he sees a disjunction between what the Catholic Church says and what it appears to do. So he hears on one hand this idea of forgiveness, turn the other cheek, the golden rule. And on the other hand, as a homosexual in the 1950s, he feels that the church is this sort of monster looking over his shoulder, this terrible thing that is constantly haunting him, especially based on his Irish childhood, where he would have been surrounded by this very conservative version of the church.